Coming up on DTNS, good news and bad news for Xbox fans. How computer vision, 5G, and Starlink might make your cotton t-shirts cheaper. And Lamar gives us the lowdown on whether Instagram Reels is for everyone. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, August 11th, 2020 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. Also in Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. And I'm the show's, pro and I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Because <laughs> you are. I'm, in case I'm you Roger Chang? Yes, you I are the producer. Yeah. Hey, uh, we were just talking about pie and cake and claim jumper and all kinds of good stuff on Good Day Internet. If you want in on that fun, you got to become a member and get uh, your Patreon on at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Well, we were off by just one day. A tease from NVIDIA on Monday implied that an announcement would come on August 31st. But Tuesday, NVIDIA announced an event at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, September 1st. Expect a new line of GeForce video cards, likely the RTYX 3000 series and a successor to the RTX 2080. Dell announced a new Latitude 7410 Chromebook Enterprise that can be configured as a two-on-one. It comes with a 10th generation Intel Core i7 processor and up to 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Now, Dell promises up to 21 hours of battery life. No pricing or availability yet. Got a lot of products today. Feels like CES. TCL announced a new line of mid-range 5 and 6 series 4K TVs. They run the Roku OS, support HDR10, hmm. Dolby Vision, and HLG. Uh, the 50-inch 5 Series starts at $400 with a QLED screen and a 60 hertz refresh rate. And the 6 Series adds mini-LED backlighting to the QLED screens, starting with a 55-inch for $900. That's such a good price. I know. I know. you got to be in that Roku universe, though. More product announcements. Xiaomi announced the Mi 10 Ultra Phone with 120x hybrid zoom, 50 watt wireless charging, and 120 watt wireless watt wired charging. Rather, the 6.67 inch OLED phone starts at 5,299 won, which is about 760 US dollars, for eight gigabytes of RAM in black, silver, and transparent. Hmm. Xiaomi also announced a 55 inch transparent TV, the Mi TV Lux OLED Transparent Edition. Similar to previous TVs from Samsung and LG, it looks like a piece of glass when it's turned off. It costs 9,999 won or about 7,200 US dollars and coming to China on August 16th. Buying it. So remember how it looked like Twitter had launched the option to limit replies to tweets, but then Twitter said it hadn't? Well, now it's officially launched. Look for a globe icon at the bottom of your tweet to limit who can reply. Oh, good. Uh, the Enreal, N-R-E-A-L, Enreal Light Mixed Reality Glasses are available now in Korea, K-O-R-E-A, for 699,000 won. That's around $586 US. Also bundled with a Galaxy Note 20 or LG Velvet for a little more. The, real, the Enreal glasses look like sunglasses and connect by a wire to your phone for computing. That's why they're doing the bundles. The glasses come with various nose clips, a corrective lens insert, and a VR cover to block out light and make for a clearer picture. Enreal promises support for Chrome, Facebook, and Instagram, among others at launch. You can pre-order now with store arrival coming August 21st. Google announced a new category of apps coming to Android Auto, starting with a Google Calendar app. Other new categories coming soon for third-party apps include parking, like Spot Hero, more EV charging options, like ChargePoint, and more navigation beyond Google Maps and Waze, including Sygic. There's also an actual settings app that will run on the dashboard and give you a little bit more control over what you're doing. Calendar and settings are coming over the next month with third-party apps coming in beta by the end of the year. San Francisco, oh, sorry, bit my, my lip. <laughs> what did San Francisco ever do to you? <laughs> Bite your lip. Something bad. <laughs> San Francisco Superior Court Judge Ethan Schulman issued a preliminary injunction ordering Uber and Lyft to classify their California drivers as employees. Now, the judge ruled that drivers do not perform work outside the usual course of Uber and Lyft's business, business pointing out drivers are central, not tangible. Tangent, what, what's that word? Tangential. Tangential? Okay, I haven't used that before. To the business. The injunction uh, has stayed for 10 days to allow for both companies to appeal, which they will. Yeah, they definitely will. Bite your tongue. 
I don't want to. It really hurt. Not again. No, please. <laughs> uh, and uh, news, we've been keeping you up to date on vaccines, even though it's a little bit outside of technology. And you may have heard Russia announced it has registered a SARS-CoV-2 vaccine from Gamaleya Institute that has not yet entered phase three trials. If you're like, wait a minute, I didn't hear you mention this before. Uh, it will be administered to volunteers outside of clinical trials, phase three trials as you recall, are the last stage before approval, and that phase is used to ensure safety and effectiveness. There are five vaccines for SARS-CoV-2 in phase three trials right now, one from AstraZeneca and Oxford University. That's on track if all goes well to gain approval in October. Vaccines both from Moderna and BioNTech Pfizer and Shanghai Fosun could see approval as early as November. So the Russian one is not approved after a phase three trial. It's the government saying we're going to let volunteers take it after the phase two trial which some people say may or may not be dangerous. Uh, so there you go. All right, let's talk a little bit about Xbox. Yeah, so the good news first. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers with an Android device can start playing games streaming from the cloud as part of Project xCloud beta that started Tuesday. You use the beta of the Game Pass app, not the Project xCloud preview app, as that one goes away September 11th. Now, the beta launches with about 30 titles of the expected 100 that will eventually be there at launch. Project X Cloud officially launches on September 15th. Now, that's the good news. Uh, also good news, hold on. Uh, Microsoft said in a blog post that it will launch the Xbox Series X in November. So now we have kind of an almost date. But here's the bad news. The official Halo account tweeted that Halo Infinite's release date will be shifted to 2021 due to multiple factors, including lockdowns caused by the virus. Now, Halo Infinite was supposed to be included at the launch of the Xbox Series X. That is unfortunate news. I mean, we, we obviously wanted to have a launch game with the console and, you know, and PC, but I'd rather them kind of get the game right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. We were talking about that before the show too. Like they they went out of their way to say one of the factors was the lockdown and and yes. and, and the pandemic. So it sounded like there were probably some other things that they wanted to fix as well, which might have led to this being delayed anyway. Yeah, there was a lot of blowback from the the demo they showed uh a couple few weeks back and so uh they could have been a factor. Uh, and I'm also mentioning in a pre-show, it could have, you know, like people are also working from home. We don't know how powerful the computers are, yeah, right. how long it takes to get things done. It just could just be delayed. And it's like, hey, take your time. We have a bunch of games coming out in the next few months. Like, I don't know if I would have jumped on Halo day one anyway with all the all the crazy AAA games coming out. So I'm like, take your time. We ain't going nowhere unless yeah. we... Let's let's we do go somewhere. I mean, it's not great. <laughs> Halo is a yeah. popular title for for an Xbox launch, so they're, they're not loving having to delay it. But um, yeah, and and it'll be interesting to see what the response is to uh, to the uh, Project X Cloud beta, uh, which has you know has been favorably compared to Stadia, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say. And I I was in the first beta. I have uh, this just kind of dropped today, so I haven't had a chance to play with the the one today. Uh, I gotta say, and uh, again, this is on, on an Android phone. Uh, I, and I was running on Wi-Fi to be to you know be clear, seamless. I was playing uh, Gears Four, I believe it was, uh, and or whatever the latest Gears was, and, tr and trying that out. Uh, just a couple hiccups, you know. But again, for playing on my phone, that was pretty pretty seamless. Um, I, I I think this the comparison of this being like the Netflix of games is very apt. I, I, why Stadia didn't do this is why they're not getting the kind of positive coverage that they're getting. I'm, it's not to say that Stadia is bad, because it's not. I've tried it. I also have tried it on mobile. It's a good service. It works really well. Uh, but it's the model of how you get the games is the problem. And yeah, so you don't have to think about it with xCloud. It's just there, right? It's just there, yeah. Yeah. Well, Google announced the Android Earthquake Alerts System, something you would want to know is there, an attempt to use phone accelerometers to detect and then alert people of earthquakes. It's similar to an app called MyShake from the University of California at Berkeley that detects P waves from earthquakes early and then can warn users before the damaging S wave shocks reach them, at least in some cases. Usually it's only a minute or so of heads up warning, but sometimes that is plenty. The Google system would not rely on users installing apps though, 
because it would be built into Android itself. The company is working with California's Shake Alert system. It's the same one underpinning MyShake to combine accelerometer data with seismometers for better predictions and alerts. <clears throat> Pardon me. The feature will come through Google Play services update and be on for anybody with location services on. Proactive alerts will launch first in California and come to other areas over time. Yeah, it strikes me how similar this is to the uh, exposure notification system that Google and Apple worked on together, which is uh, you can have an app but people have to go and install the app, make it part of the operating system, yeah. and suddenly you're going to get a lot more data in the system, a lot more accelerometers contributing stuff here. Uh, and of course, being in California, where we have earthquakes frequently, uh, this is this is pertinent to us in particular. Uh, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of earthquake uh, regions uh, around the world, Peru, Japan, uh, and more. Uh, and you need to have the back end for this to work, right? The, you needed to have the system that we have in California that has actual seismometers out there so it can take the accelerometer data and pool it with the actual seismometer data for it to work. That's why it's launching first in California. Uh, but w once you can get those kinds of systems up and running elsewhere or integrate into the existing ones like they have in Japan, for instance, uh, I think we'll see this in more places. I man, it's not a lot, but man, if it's enough to get you, you know, uh, out, uh, out into a doorway or under a desk or whatever you need to do, that's good. Yeah, I could wrap up what I'm doing in the bathroom. You know, right, I'm not gonna say if I'm right. if I'm sitting there or not. You know, but I might be. <laughs> yeah, it just depends on where you, when you got in there. But uh, but yeah, no, it's it's a lot of people are like a minute. I mean, we need like an hour to like drive away or something. It's that's that's not possible at this point. But yeah, for anybody who, who's who's been through an earthquake that's big enough where you're like, oh, I'm pretty freaked out. You know, it's is. I want to be somewhere where something's not going to fall on me. Yeah. Um. You know, or or otherwise, you know, power line stuff. It 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 would matter. A minute can save your life for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's shift gears from from saving lives to annoying podcasters. A uh, whole different situation. Uh, <laughs> not us. Geekwire says Amazon Music and Audible have sent emails to podcasters asking them to submit their shows to a new catalog of podcasts that will be added to both services. That's good news for all of us, right? Yeah. Oh, sure. Good. Yeah. Why not? Mm -hmm. One more place to, you know, get discovered. The email that they sent to podcasters said, first of all, that the information was confidential, which that's one of my pet peeves is somebody says under embargo. And I'm like, I never agreed to the embargo. Like you can't yeah. just say, I'm going to give you all this information, but Hey, it's confidential, which is why it leaked out. Uh, mm -hmm. It also invited podcasters to submit their show in advance of the launch of the service. Podcasters who clicked through to submit their own show found a license agreement, totally normal, and you're going to have a license agreement. And some eagle-eyed podcasters noticed that the license agreement said, quote, your content may not include advertising or messages that disparage or are directed against Amazon or any service. So, <laughs> any service I, ever? I mean, where do I Any start? Amazon service, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't remember getting this email, but you know, there may have been, I don't know, maybe it's, you know, a podcaster associated oh, with I a, 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 uh, I got like 12 of them because <laughs> I do that many podcasts. Uh, and you're right. I, I, or I, who knows, maybe I did and I just haven't seen it yet, but you know, the, the whole thing of you can't disparage Amazon. That's a little silly, but if it were me, I'd be like, well, okay, but I don't. So that's fine. But you, then you get into some gray areas like on here on this show. What if we were covering a story where it was Amazon against another company and it was reported mm -hmm. as news, but Amazon decided to take issue with the way that it was reported. Like there, it's just a strange thing to, to tell people, we really want you to be part of, you know, our new podcast universe, but with some serious restrictions. Yeah. yeah. They need to be agnostic, just like Apple and, and Google and, and Spotify, all of them are. And just, yeah, unless they're going to pay you, you know, you get, a, you get to be part of a premium tier where you get some, Ad sharing, I can see this kind of thing in there, and then it's up to your judgment whether you want to be part of that or not. That's still that's still a, a you know a weird situation, but at least you're getting something for it. But just to, to blanket tell you, you can't talk bad about them. It's is uh, it's really silly. I, I maybe I shouldn't have said I got these emails because it was required of me to be confidential, uh, but I did. <laughs> I didn't click through on them because we have Acast, and it said in the email, you know, if you have a platform you're a part of, your platform will take care of it. So I I pinged Acast. I was like, hey, you on this? They're like, yeah, we're on it. It's fine. And so I didn't think twice about it, which is why I never read the terms of service, which is why I didn't see this. I don't think Amazon is really trying to trick podcasters into never saying anything negative about them. No news service 
No, this show particularly would not submit to those terms. Absolutely not. We are free to say whatever evaluative statements we want to say about anybody. Uh, it, it, it That is not something we would ever agree to. And even non-news shows wouldn't because they don't want to get caught, like Sarah was saying, like, well, we don't really like what you said. Even if it wasn't disparaging, we're going to say it is. This mm -hmm. was boilerplate stuff that was put in a terms of service without thinking. And uh, I fully expect Amazon will take it out immediately. Right, Amazon? I, I actually do have an Amazon affiliate link, so can we not say anything bad about them? Just, you know, I love you, Amazon. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Google. <laughs> <laughs> Google has rolled out a new feature for search in India that lets anyone create a virtual visiting card what you might call a calling card or business card. Now, Google calls them people cards. When you sign into Google, you search for your name or add me to search and look for the prompt, add yourself to Google search. You'll be asked to verify a phone number that you can get from uh, where you can write a description of yourself and other information like links to websites and social media, phone number, address, work, education details, email address, all optional. Now your picture is, a, uh, is your Google account picture, but you can change it if you want. Now each account can only create one card and cards can be reported for things like spam or impersonation. You can delete your own card at any time. People cards is now available in India in English on mobile. Yeah, so I, I uh, took a little trip through my VPN to Mumbai uh, and tried this out. Uh, you can only do it on mobile. You can only do it on your phone, but it was easy. I I, I searched "add me to search," uh, and it popped right up. Like, oh, would you would you like to add yourself to search? Here you go. Click click click. It, okay. it, it uh, required me to verify my phone number. It sent me a code because I said, oh yeah, this is my phone number. It sent me the code. I entered the code. It's like, okay, great. I didn't end up creating the people card because it failed at the end. I think it may have failed because it knew I was on VPN somehow at the at the verification stage. But it was really easy to fill out, and it had a, a lot of information you could choose to add, uh, home experience, work experience, uh, address, phone number. If you're a business, I think this would be really good for you. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's sometimes being described as maybe a competitor for LinkedIn. Uh, I, I think it's for people who are like, yeah, LinkedIn's too much. I just want to have, you know, I'm a consultant. Uh, or I'm a freelancer, or I'm a small business. I just want to have my information out there. Here's an easy way for me to get it out there. I'm, I wonder how much it really helps because if people aren't searching for you anyway, uh, this isn't going to solve that. But if they are, and it's kind of like, you know, I've done this before where there's a person and I'm, I'm just kind of verifying, oh, is this the lawyer person with this name or is it some other person? You know, it, and kind of do a Google search and just sort of see what comes up. If something that oh, yeah. was specifically about the person in question and there was some information, because maybe I did want a phone number, you know, or an address or a PO box or, or more information about that person's mm -hmm. website, then I can see this being a quick search. You're already in Google anyway. And yeah, you mentioned LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn works really well for people who use the platform, but it requires some upkeep and there's a lot of social interaction and, and it's it's also not just in search where you were already. Yeah, I think I think it's interesting, and I, I'm curious uh, how it does in India, uh, how it takes off. It you know this this is a thing that apparently, according to Google, anyway, people have been requesting and people have been asking for. So, uh, uh, any Indian uh, listeners out there, let us know if you try this out, uh, how it works for you. I love it when new features are introduced. Like people have been wanting this. Okay. That's why we made it. John Deere subsidiary Blue River Technology published a post Friday about its Sea and Spray computer vision product. The software uses a database of plant imagery to train a computer vision system on the open source PyTorch machine learning platform to identify weeds between crops and only spray those with herbicide. This could reduce the amount of herbicide used by up to 90% and also keep unwanted chemicals off the crops that we end up eating. The system is aimed for use in cotton and soybeans. Protocol.com spoke with Blue River's director of computer vision, Chris Padwick, about the project. So if you'd like to read more, that would be a good place to go. Padwick mentions they use NVIDIA cards in the tractors through eventual 5G or Starlink rollout could make a cloud system possible as well that would allow for more power and faster updates to the model. Yeah, this is a fascinating read, folks. Uh, if you're one of those people who've been like, what's 5G going to do for me? Uh, it could make your T-shirt cheaper. <laughs> it could make your tofu <laughs> cheaper. Uh, this, this is really interesting. The use of NVIDIA cards in the tractors, the speculation uh, that they had with Padwick about, like, well, could you do a cloud service? 
office and he just he sort of entertained it. He's like, well, you know, Star I'm really interested in Starlink because that could give us some rural connectivity. 5G might be there, but it's going to take a while for it to get out into rural areas that we need it to. Uh, but he's like, once we did have a cloud system, then, yeah, we could we could actually do a lot more data collection. He was more excited about the data collection than than powering the actual tractors from the cloud because you could do real time collection and, and updating as conditions change and, and stuff. The, it was also the other interesting thing in this article was how computer vision had a challenge uh, in training because we're really good at telling a cat from a dog and being able to label stuff for a machine learning algorithm to be like, that's a cat, that's a dog. It takes specialists to be able to tell velvet leaf from soybean, right? Like I, most people won't be able to look at it and tell you which is which. So you need agronomists. You need people who know this easily to be able to at scale go and label this stuff for computer vision. So if you if you want some good examples of, you know, what is AI quote unquote writ large good for, this is a great example. You said it all, man. I try. Uh, hey folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. While TikTok is under the gun from the Indian and U.S. governments, and as of today, the French, who have started a data handling probe of TikTok, Instagram Reels is out there hoping to steal TikTok's thunder. And it may be working. Business Insider reports it has talked to people who claim to have sold enough fake views on Reels to pay for, quote, a good car and a decent home. They didn't say where, but still, that's a lot. Uh, <laughs> while we don't condone using a botnet to pump up your view count on any platform, the arrival and success of scammers is certainly one sign that a platform is viable. Like if you can make money selling fake views to people, there must be people who are valuing that platform. However, is it good for law abiding people as well? Lamar, you've been trying it out since the launch on August 5th. What do you think are real so far? I have been trying it out, and uh, you know it is it is a let's be real it is uh, real okay sorry <laughs> uh, it it is a knockoff TikTok. Uh, however, for someone like me who had had a didn't really have a big TikTok showing or 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 viewership, you know, I just I never promoted it to have something like that in my Instagram with, with already with viewers. It 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 took off. I've done see it came out with six days ago. I've done eleven so far, and some of it is. Uh, are things I put on TikTok, but some of it has been original content, you know, little memes and things I come up with. And I've been having a ball. I've been having a ball, and and uh, it, like almost all of them are getting fifty thousand views or, or higher. And it, and it, it's it's not so for me. It's not so much the views. It's getting a new audience that had no idea who I was before to 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 see to see what I do. So it's been it. I, I look at reels as a silly side of Instagram as if Instagram wasn't already silly. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's it's just a sillier side that, you know, none of that content means anything. You you just throw it up to be funny. Um <laughs> and then and then you got the other parts that want to be more serious with IGTV, I can. Uh or you know, or we're just or stories if I want to vlog. So it, it, it to me it's completed the app. And I know Instagram is literally ripped off from everyone, from Snapchat, from YouTube to to to, to now uh, TikTok. But it's worked. I, I think it's going to be a success. It, it, it you know, it's not going to be a TikTok replacement right now, unless they close, then it's the closest thing to it. But, but, uh, it's great. I'm having so much fun with it right now. You know, every time Instagram, well, at this point, I don't actually feel that way anymore, but it used to be that when Instagram would rip off something super blatantly, Snapchat, great example. I was like, no, yeah, this is so stupid. Like, how do they sleep at night? You know, there's, already, there's they ripped off every single feature. It even looks the same. Mm -hmm. I'm not using this. I already have a network for this. Well, I was, I was often alone in those thoughts because people are like, well, no, I, I don't care about that other service that I wasn't using anyway, but I like what I'm seeing in Instagram now. And I was already here. I mean, people like to hang out in one app and do a lot of things. They, they just do. do. And yeah. that, you know, that I... I'm sort of changing my tune now because I, I feel the same way where I'm like, but TikTok I love so much and that's its own thing. Instagram is a very different place to me. You know, it's a lot more sort of beauty shots and life is so great. But it, like you mentioned, the silly aspect of it, and I mean, there's plenty of silly stuff on Instagram, but introducing more of that and allowing people to be creative in ways that it was never really known for, it, it's, it's an interesting concept and I wonder how many people will adopt it. 
I, I think, Lamar, one of the things that you mm -hmm. mentioned, and, and Sarah, you kind of back this up, is that the advantage Instagram has, and it's an interesting thing because Facebook, the parent company of Instagram, doesn't seem to be able to do this, but Instagram does, is take a, an imitation and work it into their existing uh, user base so that people adopt it. Stories didn't torpedo Snapchat. Uh, it just got a pe bunch of people who might not have ever used Snapchat to start mm -hmm. using Snapchat like functionality. And exactly. what that's what you're describing is not that you never use TikTok, but you're like, man, I'd have to work really hard to build up an audience on TikTok. I already have an audience on Instagram. So reels make sense because I can just use it. Yeah. And I know, I know YouTube is going to try to do their own thing, but that's, I don't, it, it, YouTube is like, like, like your granddad, you know, like, you know, <laughs> you, for them to try to come up with a service like that is like, nah, because they have <laughs> stories. They, yeah. they, ha they, they, they have stories there. And uh, I just, I, I, I no, no one uses it. Well, so. I think that's a good question that some people may have. What is the difference between a story on Instagram, which is essentially Snapchat, right? It's a short video and reels, which is also a short video. Well, it goes, uh, stories are, are, uh, uh, go away after 24 hours. Ephemeral, so, yeah. Yeah, ephemeral. I was, I was trying okay. to come up with the word. Thank you. The ephemeral. So, which I wish tweets were, but that's another story. So, but yeah, so they go <laughs> they go away. <laughs> and reels are, are very loopy. They're designed to be edited differently and, and they stay on as, as, until you delete them, which most people, I don't think they're going to delete them. So, right. And it's but it's more meme -y stuff. Um, it's very meme. -y, as in yeah. meme like things. Mm -hmm. uh, and that. I mean, TikTok has been so successful just with getting people to, we're all going to do something funny to the same song. And it's going to be like millions of people doing this. And there's like a really fun community aspect of it that even though I'm totally an observer, I've never made one TikTok anything. Um, I, I, I really enjoy that stuff. And Instagram has a huge user base. And so even if a small portion of, especially some of the creators with larger audiences, get a hold of this, then yeah, it wouldn't make sense to, to move over to TikTok unless you were already re really, really popular there. Really? I got that. Um, <laughs> make sure a challenge to you, Sarah, uh, by the end of this week, you're making a reels. You are making one. Okay. Okay. All right. Challenge accepted, Lamar. All right. <laughs> and the challenge to the rest of the audience is to find the one reel I made. <laughs> <laughs> You made one. Mm. I didn't know that. I did. I did. <laughs> Nobody. Uh, nobody's. Nobody's seen it. So uh, you could be the first. Go check it out. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit, folks. Uh, submit your stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. I just stole Sarah's read, so now she can have mine. Uh, Tom, I would wait for you to tell me to check out the mailbag, but you know what? I'm just going to do it on my own. Regarding mail, malls, rather, uh, this is from Rick in Kingwood, Texas. Regarding malls and the story about Amazon possibly taking over anchor stores to be warehouses, we talked about this yesterday, anchor stores can veto changes, says Rick. And many of the leases to non-anchor tenants, those are the, the smaller stores kind of in the middle of the mall, have clauses that lower their rent when anchor store traffic goes down or leaves altogether. In Houston, the San Jacinto Mall redevelopment was held up for years because the anchor stores wouldn't agree to changes that the mall owner wanted to implement. If the empty anchor stores become distribution centers, then they don't bring any retail traffic to the mall, possibly triggering the other tenants' rent reduction or even closure. Yeah, and so Rick suspected maybe uh, Simon Mall, the, the folks that we talked about wanting to possibly uh, you know, give give tenancy to Amazon for distribution centers uh, could be using that as, as a way to put pressure on other anchor stores to say, well, we could, we could just hand your contract over to somebody else. The San Jacinto mall, I looked into it. Uh, those anchor stores had long term restrictive contracts. And uh, I think that was probably a lesson for a lot of mall owners too, not to give long-term restrictive contracts uh, to people. So I, I wonder how many other malls would have to get an anchor tenant to agree to sell its contract to Amazon in order to to hand this over. Cause yeah. that, that's real, what doomed that mall in Houston. Real quick, you, we say anchor, you mean like Montgomery Ward or JC Penney? Yeah, JC Penney, Sears, I'm so sorry, Nordstrom. I mentioned Montgomery, Montgomery Ward. They do not yeah. exist anymore. <laughs> 
I just thought about Sticks that. Baron right. Fuller. Yeah. Those. <laughs> the Emporium. Hey, shout right. out to patrons at our master and grandmaster levels, including Tony Glass, Jeffrey Zilks, and Steve Ayadirola. Also, thanks to Lamar Wilson for being with us today. Always a pleasure. Can't wait to see all your reels. What else you got going on? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm doing a lot of content on uh, on reels as you as you mentioned IGTV, but uh, I'm also porting some of the IGTV content over to YouTube. So you can check it out on YouTube.com/slash Lamar Wilson. Right now, I got a reaction series going on where I just actually literally just reacted to the Halo Infinite thing. And yesterday, uh, well, actually, it's not on YouTube yet, uh, but but tomorrow it'll be on YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna react to a $300 toaster and why that exists. <laughs> Mm, that's yes. a pricey a toaster. Smart, a smart toaster with a screen on it. Yeah. Like why does that? Why does that exist? So check me out on yeah on my YouTube. Appreciate it. YouTube.com slash Lamar Wilson. There's two R's in all the best names, including Lamar at oh, YouTube.com slash Lamar Wilson. Hey, folks, uh, we are in the process of putting some new stuff in the store. Uh, so you might want to go keep an eye out over there. We've got hoodies. Uh, we've got hats. We've got mugs. We've got masks. It's all there. It's got a DTNS logo on it. And uh, you could be like Zoe Brings Bacon uh, and just cover yourself in DTNS logos. Uh, mm -hmm. Go check it out. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash store. And if you've got an email that you're just waiting to write us, now's the time. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2030 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. The Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>